Paddle Lane, The Fox and the Magician. The Fox and the Magician. The wide awake mice were all in the big hole under the hollow tree when Chestnut came down the mouse hole from the garden. It's time we went out to look for food, he said. I don't think I can go out this evening, said Aunt Matilda. Nor can I, said Uncle Maximus. Uncle Maximus didn't want to go because he was feeling frightened, but Aunt Matilda really wasn't very well. The wide awake mice were in the big hole under the tree. Aunt Matilda had nearly been eaten by a fox the evening before. She had escaped, but she was still feeling very shaken. She was very upset too, because her dress was all torn and muddy. All the other mice were growing more like wood mice every day, but Aunt Matilda couldn't forget that she was a wide awake mouse. She liked to look pretty and neat, and when she looked at a torn dress, she felt very unhappy. Aunt Matilda was very upset. The sun was beginning to set. There were long shadows in the garden as the wide awake mice came out of the hole and scattered to look for food. Chestnut went off to find the hole down to a crocus bulb that he had dug the day before. Aunt Jane went with Grandfather and Grandmother Mouse to look for nuts on the steps of the magician's house, and Jeremy and Miranda went off to a bush of berries near the wall. The wide awake mice went to look for food. They found the bush without any trouble and climbed up to eat the berries. They had each eaten three and were beginning to think that a few nuts would be very pleasant when Miranda suddenly said, Look, Jeremy, what's that? Miranda said, Look, Jeremy. They looked down and saw a little doll lying in the long grass below them. Miranda and Jeremy didn't know it, but the doll belonged to Gita. Gita and Sarah had been playing in the garden that afternoon, and Gita had dropped the doll as they were going back to the gate. Jeremy and Miranda looked down. They saw a little doll. Jeremy and Miranda ran down to the ground to take a closer look. It's like the dolls we used to see in Mr. Wideawake's toy shop, said Jeremy. It isn't alive like us, is it? asked Miranda. Of course it isn't, said Jeremy. We only came alive when the magician spilt magic dust all over us. It's got a lovely dress, said Miranda. Let's take it back to Aunt Matilda. It's just the right size. A new dress would make her happy. Again. All right, said Jeremy. They began to pull the doll home towards the hollow tree. Let's take the doll back to Aunt Matilda, said Miranda. They had not gone far when they came to some thick bushes. The two little mice stopped. We shall spoil the dress if we pull the doll through those, said Miranda. Let's take the dress off and leave the doll here. The two little mice stopped. Let's take the dress off said Miranda. The long grass near the bushes stirred. Jeremy and Miranda were so excited and so busy with the doll that they forgot to look and listen. The grass parted a little. A long nose sniffed the air and two bright eyes looked out. It was the fox. It was the fox. Very quietly, the fox moved an inch or two forward. Jeremy and Miranda still didn't see the fox, and the fox didn't make a sound. He stood there watching. He stiffened, ready to pounce. Jeremy and Miranda didn't see the fox. There was a sudden flash and a noise like a thunderclap. A ball of fire burst over their heads. The two little mice leapt to one side and hid under, hid under a big stone. The fox jumped back. The fox jumped back. The magician was standing by the bushes. He looked straight at the fox. I hear that you have been hunting in my garden, he said. I have made a rule and you must obey it. 
You can hunt in the woods or in the fields, but not in my garden. If you hurt any animals who live in my garden, I shall turn you to stone. The fox looked up and saw the magician. The fox looked at the magician for a few moments. Then without, turn, then without a word, he turned and ran off. He went back through a hole he had dug under the garden wall and across the fields to the wood. The fox ran off. He ran out of the garden and back to the wood. Has he gone? asked a whiffly griffly voice. The griffle's head appeared over a bush. Yes, he's gone, said the magician, and he won't come back to the garden. But keep a watch for me, Griffle. I don't want anyone to hurt the wide awake mice. Look after them for me. I don't like mice, said the Griffle, but the wide awake mice are a bit different. I keep seeing them about in the garden, and I don't think I mind them as much as I did at first. The wide awake mice won't hurt you, said the magician. He went back to the house, and the Griffle began to vanish. Look after the wide awake mice, said the magician. Jeremy peeped out from under the stone. His whiskers twitched. There's no one here, he whispered. He crept out and Miranda followed him. Are you quite sure the fox is gone? asked Miranda, looking all around. Didn't you hear what the magician said? asked Jeremy. We're safe now. We must still be very careful, said Miranda. Who is the magician talking to? I don't know, said Jeremy. But whoever it was, he's gone. Jeremy looked out. There is no one here, he said. Let's go home, said Miranda. She picked up the dress and Jeremy picked up the doll's hat. They set off for the hollow tree. Let's go home, said Miranda. The other mice were all safely back in the big hole under the tree. They had heard the bang and had seen the flash, and they had run home as fast as they could. Grandfather Mouse and Aunt Jane were just setting out to look for Jeremy and Miranda when the two little mice came down the mouse hole. Jeremy and Miranda came down the mouse hole. When Aunt Matilda heard what the magician had said to the fox, she was so thankful that she began to feel better at once. And when she saw the dress and hat that Jeremy and Miranda had brought back for her, she was so delighted that she almost danced over the tree roots. She put the dress, she put on the dress at once, and by the time she had had some supper, she was her old self again. Aunt Matilda put on the dress. Before the sun had quite gone down, Gita and Sarah came back to the garden. They were looking for Gita's doll. It was Sarah who found it. Look, Gita, she cried, picking it up. Here it is, for someone has taken the doll's dress. Who could have done that? I don't know, but I think I can guess, said Gita. I once saw a mouse on the garden wall. She was dressed in a skirt. The mice who live in this garden aren't like other mice. I think they must have taken it. Look, Gita, said Sarah, here is the doll. I think the mice must have taken the dress, said Gita. How can we get it back if the mice have taken it, asked Sarah. We can't, said Gita, but I don't mind a bit. I can make another dress for the doll. Let's see if we can see the mice. But although they looked very carefully, they didn't see any mice that evening. The wide awake mice were all at home, admiring Aunt Matilda's new dress. Sarah and Gita looked for the mice.